Let's paint this autumn leaf together. We're going to be doing a series of different leaves. I think that would be really cool to do. So today we're going to be painting this beautiful, really autumnal coloured leaf and I'm going to show you how to do it with easy to follow steps. I've done a little outline here as you can see and if you can't draw or you don't like drawing don't worry because I provide you with a totally free outline and I'll tell you later on in this video how you can have access to that. Now just keep in mind when you're drawing your own drawing that you don't want the, refer the outline to be super super hard. I'm just keeping it a little bit heavier for the purposes of filming but you'll want to get yourself um, a little putty eraser and just roll it around some of the areas to make that pencil line just barely visible. You don't really want to be seeing it but like I said just for the purposes of filming so that you can see what I'm doing this is just a, um, an ordinary putty eraser that I've kept in this little um, this little tin here that's an old tea light um, container so I just cleaned that out and just popped it in there just to keep it nice and dry. The, the paper that I'm using today is a cold press paper this is from Edger and it's in a little sketchbook because I want to make it a series as you can see here. So let's start off by mixing a nice colour that we can see on the base of this leaf. You can see from the reference photograph that the underlying colour is a kind of yellowy orangey tone and that's what we're going to be doing first of all. So this is my little Etcher palette. We're going to mix up these lovely autumnal tones but remember watercolour is all about working from light to dark. We've got lots of reds, browns, oranges and almost like a purpley hue on the end there but let's see where we can start off. So I'm going to start off by mixing a nice kind of yellowy colour and then I'm going to add to that a lovely kind of vermilion tone to give it that orangey hue that we see underneath the paint. And we're going to take this all over. Now I'm going to make sure that I've got plenty of water and I'm just going to put this all over like this. This is wet on dry straight onto that watercolour paper. I've got this little puddle here in the middle of my palette. The reason why I've got that is because it makes easy cleaning of the brush and it means that I'm not saturating my brush with water. If I were to clean it in my jar here, the water is going to run down the ferrule of the brush and then transfer onto my paper, which I don't want. Add the colour right up to that pencil line. I'm using my number eight brush. This is my own from my own set. Um, I recently did a collaboration with Craftamo. I'm not sure whether they've sold out by now. I do film a little bit in advance. So, but if you did want to check them out, I'm going to link them in the description underneath this video and all of the other materials that I'm going to be using today. So just add this on. This is our base color, this lovely orangey tone, right up to that pencil line. This brush has a nice fine tip. So we can go right up to that pencil line, wet on dry. Wet on dry means that you're applying that paint directly onto the watercolour paper and then you can drop in another colour if you want to. So we're just going to put this on. You'll notice around the outside edge of this leaf that there's a darker colour and we want to drop that in fairly quickly while that paint is still a little bit damp because we want it to blur into that edge. And for that, I'm going to be using a tiny bit of a purpley tone and a little bit of a brown tone. So we've got, I'm using a colour called Bright Clear Violet and also Van Dyke Brown. So you could use something like a Perilean Violet or something like that. So while that's still down, I'm just picking up these colours that I've mixed and I'm just dropping it in. Using the tip of my brush to release that pigment and you can see how it's spreading into that leaf. I maybe could have done with mixing a little bit more, but that's okay. Just dropping it in. And then you'll see just by using that brush, it'll do the work for you. Just let it bleed into that paper. Drop it in. So this will just tell us later on when we apply our darker colours, what colours to avoid and where we're going to be putting those colours next. So with watercolour, it's all about kind of working from back to front. So you're trying to figure out which colours go where and you're working it out backwards from that point. 
It might be a bit tricky and it might seem a bit strange when you're starting out in watercolour, but I promise you, when you get used to the idea of putting down your colours and working out where they go, in reverse, as it were, I promise you, it's really easy. Notice how I'm just patting that brush onto the paper and you can see how that colour is blurring. I'm not going to go exactly to the photograph, but I'm just going to get this looking really vibrant and bright and bold and colourful just by patting that brush while it's still wet. And because I want a rough idea of where I'm going to go, I'm just going to pat this down that central line as well. Really, really lightly, just dispersing that colour over those lines that I've already pencilled in so that I know roughly where I'm going to take that colour as I work through. Just dotting it in with my number eight brush, nothing too fancy. You don't have to use the same colours that I'm using today. You can use whatever colours you have. In fact, I encourage it. And if you don't have the colours that I'm using and you are struggling to match your colours, please drop me a comment below and I will help you pick the colours that you need. You don't have to go out and buy exactly the same colours as me. One thing I do recommend is that you make up a colour chart like this. All these colours represent the paints in my palette in the order that they are set out. And what this means is I swatch them out in their lightest, their mid-tone and their darkest colour. And you can see that this makes matching colours really easy. I do have a full video explaining how I do this and I'll link it on the top of your screen so that you can check that out. I'm cleaning my brush completely in the water and wiping it dry. And with that damp brush, I'm just using it to push that pigment into that pencil line because as we all know watercolor retracts as it dries and it pulls away slightly from the pencil line so we can just blur those edges in as well clean your brush wipe it and then with that damp brush we are just merging those colors like this pushing that pigment into the corners you can see that this brush has a lovely fine point and it means that you can push it into the corners really easily and make your colors go where you want to go even though this pigment has been on the paper for a while, I can, you can see that I can just push it up into the body of the leaf and make it go wherever I want it to go. Still dropping it in and letting it settle naturally into that paper. Now all I have to do at this point is be really patient and let that first layer dry before I go in with the next one and just let that settle. But while I'm waiting, I can put some colour onto the stalk here. I'm going to use a little bit of, so this is Van Dyke Brown with a tiny bit of the yellow colour that I used at the start. It was permanent yellow deep. You could use something like a an Indian yellow. You could use um, yellow ochre, any kind of brownie colour that you've got. And just applying this onto the stalk, still with my number eight brush because it's got that nice fine point straight onto that paper. As I said, all the materials that I'm going to be using, I will link in the description box underneath so you can take a look and check them out for yourself. Just applying that, cleaning my brush, patting it dry, and then just blending it out. You'll notice that I've smudged my paper a little bit there. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the Magic Eraser and just pat that dry. And that's gone. So just be patient, gonna let that dry, and then we'll come back for wash number two. So while I'm waiting for this to completely dry, I've just added a tiny bit more of that lovely brown colour. This is Van Dyke Brown to that purple. And I thought I'd add a little bit more detail to this little section here where we've got these little buds coming through. So you can see there's a little curve on the bottom of these. I'm just going to use my number two brush and just paint the bottom section only with this little curve shape like this. Clean my brush pat it on my kitchen paper and then with that damp brush I'm just going to take that outside edge and blur it into the middle like that. Keep doing it, clean the brush and blur the outside edge so you get this lovely gentle blurry shape. We've got another one here so we can take that around only half of it, clean the brush and use the tip of that brush to blend it out. And we've got another little one here. As I said, I'm not strictly going to the photo. You can kind of make it up. But if you want to add another layer, just drop it in. Clean your brush, pat it dry. It's really important that you pat it dry because that gives you the control. And then just take that brush and then gently blur it 
And I'm just taking it down that little bit there. So that gives you a nice soft edge, really easy to do. The stem at the moment is looking a little bit flat and with watercolour, because it retracts and it does its own thing a little bit when we apply it, you can see that I've gone slightly outside the pencil line there. There are a couple of ways that you can get around this problem if it happens to you and it does happen to all of us. You can either work around it and paint around it and make it a slightly wider stem or I've got my blender brush here this blender brush has a nice curved tip and the bristles are slightly, um, what's the word, stiffer. So clean the brush and using that brush, you can just gently remove any errors and pat them dry with some kitchen paper. So clean your brush, go on outside the pencil line, wiggle that brush and then just press and pat. Going back to my number two brush, and just taking those colours again, and it's the same two colours, we are using a limited palette today. And all I'm going to do is go to the ender side of this and just apply that darker colour. So this is still the same two colours. We've got the purple tone and the, and the Van Dyke Brown. And I'm just taking it down the outside edge. I'm only doing half of it, cleaning my brush, patting it dry and the same process, pat, pat, pat and you can blend out that, that outside edge into the middle. I've done it in two separate halves because it makes it super easy. Bring it down, follow that line, There are five brushes in the set, by the way, if you want to check them out. You might be lucky, we had about 30 sets left at the time of filming this. So you may, you may want to check them out if you're interested in buying them. But once they're gone, they're gone. So just drop that in, clean the brush and just blend that out. By using that patting motion, I've gone outside the pencil line there, but that's okay, I can extend that line. Remember, painting is all about fun and enjoying the process. Now, at the start of this video, I did say that if you want to trace down your drawing, it's absolutely fine to do that. And there are a couple of ways that you can have access to the, uh, the outline. A really simple pencil drawing of this, I will put right at the end of this video. So that's just the pencil line that you saw when I started this. But if you would rather have a digital version, one that you can trace down yourself, that's a super, super clean image that's done digitally, that you can download, all you need to do to grab hold of that is to sign up to my Patreon. It's completely free and you'll have that delivered to your inbox every single week. I'll put the link to Patreon underneath this video. But speaking of Patreon, if you do like botanical painting, if you want to level up your painting, then we do have a Patreon where we have much more in-depth botanical painting tutorials, which are released every single month. So in case that's of interest to you, let's just take a look. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. So with Patreon you can leave and join at any time and all the Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons of that particular level. You won't find them here on YouTube. But just to reiterate, the YouTube tutorials that you see here are completely full length and you'll be able to follow them in their entirety. We don't speed up our tutorials here on our channel. We want to make art accessible to everybody. But remember you can join for free. Click on that button and you can have these free downloadables every single week. So just join up and you can grab those, like I said, for completely free. I think this is not quite dry enough, so we just want to have a little look to see what's going on. Picking up a little bit more of that darker colour and I'm just going to add a little bit here and there to add a little bit of detail where we can see a few of these little lines on the twig, just to make it a little bit more realistic. Just wiggling some shapes in, super easy, like that. And again, blend it out. If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to hit that like button below? 
it's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it means that more people can see it and I can continue to do it. Also, you may want to consider to subscribe into my channel where every week, every Tuesday, I upload new content. And if you hit that little bell on the side there, you'll be notified every time I upload and release a new episode and you won't miss out. So just gonna blend that out a little bit more. Nice and easy. Let's take a look at the colors on this beautiful leaf. I'm going to mix up a couple of ready tones now. I'm gonna use vermilion and permanent red. Going back to my number eight brush and another puddle of water here. So we're gonna use permanent red and vermilion. And we're just gonna mix them together. We want a nice orangey ready tone. So that's the vermilion there that you can see. I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of a kind of permanent rose or a nice pinky rosy color. So we've got a little bit of that pinkiness in there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to that yellowy color that we had at the beginning. This is a mixture of, what have I used? Permanent yellow deep with a tiny bit of vermilion. And I'm just gonna use this watered down version again to go over the top. So we need to go right over that color and watering it down. So we're kind of working wet in wet with a bit of pigment in it. Just pop that on. And you can add a little bit more of that yellow color if you want to, all over, nice and easy. Using the tip of that brush, take it to the outside edge, blend that out. Now here comes the fun part. While we're waiting for that to dry, we can pick up either of these two red colors and just drop them in. So pick up that color and just drop. Either one will do. Watercolour is all about building up your layers. So we can just make this go wherever we want it to go by just dropping in that colour. The thing about watercolour that makes it really special is when you're applying it on this kind of paper, it just does the work for you. This paper is a cold press, which means it's got a little bit of texture. This is 100% cotton. I really like it because it does mean that that paint isn't floating on the surface with, as it does with some papers. So just using my brush, to gently move that around. It's gonna do that work for me. Notice how it's leaving little gaps here and there and that's what we want it to do. So just by dropping in that color, it does that work for you. I've left a little gap around the outside edge because I wanna settle that into the paper. I wanna try and keep out of that darker color I've put, but you can just use the tip of the brush and wipe in it on my kitchen paper and just moving it around where I want it to go. And then all we need to do again is let that dry. You have to be a little bit patient with watercolor. It doesn't take very long to dry, so we can just leave that do its thing and come back when it's completely dry. And already we've got this beautiful leaf shape that we can start to build our colors up on. Okay, so here we are, everything's dry. Now, as I said earlier on, one of the things with watercolor is when it dries, it retracts. So you can see here that we've got these untidy edges. So using my blender brush, we can just gently merge those untidy edges together to get rid of any hard edges that we can see here. Okay, so just gently use it, just damp, so we're just using a clean damp brush and we can just wiggle that in and get rid of any hard edges that we see. So just gonna do that really lightly to just get rid of that little tide mark that we can see. You can do, any, you can do this with any brush, but the blender does make it a lot easier. So you can just merge those together really, really super quickly to get rid of any untidiness that you see. Because water, watercolor will do that no matter what application method you use, you're gonna get that untidy edge. I mean, if you're painting over it, which we will be doing, it doesn't matter too much, but it's still good practice. You can also use this to lift out any little bits that you want to do by patting and pressing. Damp brush, and you can maybe lift out one or two little bits in between the veins, press. I'll show you again here. And it's just really good for adding a little bit of interest to your, your plant like that. Okay, let's start building up these colors. And we're gonna be using the same colors as before, but this time we can mix up a little bit more pigment if we want to. So going back to these purpley browny mixes, so purple and sepia, 
that forms this lovely kind of brownie colour. I've got a little bit too much sepia there, so I'm going to mute it down a little bit with a bit of purple. A great way of muting down your browns or making them a little bit more interesting is adding purple. As I said, you could also use something like a perillion violet if you wanted to. So with this darker colour, I'm now going to go over the initial wash that I put on. When I dropped that colour in, it naturally blurred into that wet paper, but now we want to add a little bit more definition to build up those colours. So with these two colours mixed together, I can now go over the definites that I want to put on. So apply this to the outside edge. You can add a little bit of detailing by taking that colour into that colour because we've already naturally blurred it in. That's kind of telling us how far up we want to take that colour. I'm just going to add a little bit more purple and just keep an eye on where you're going with it. Right up to the pencil line and then wiggle it into that existing colour right up to the edge, taking it into that colour. Right up to the edge, taking it into that colour. You can see how I'm just wiggling that brush. I'm going to keep some of the areas a little bit lighter, just for interest, and then taking it to the outside edge, here and there. So this is my number two size brush. It's got a lovely fine point, this one. And it's also um, a little bit stiffer, so that's, it's got that nice spring or snap. Cleaning in the brush, patting it on my kitchen paper, and then once again, blurring it into that existing paint. This is dry now, so we can do that. Just blending it in. You can see how I'm just wiggling that brush, patting it, dampening it down, and just taking it into that wash. Creates a little bit of interest, and it softens out any lines. And it's nice to have that stark contrast on the outside edge, like this. You don't have to take it everywhere, but I quite like that look, so I'm going to take it around. It's also a really good way of cheating. If you've gone outside the pencil line, you can make it look deliberate. So let me just pat that in. You can make your leaf look nice and natural. Pat, pat, pat. And then once again, Use that damp brush to blend it through. Now at the moment, the outside of our leaf is looking really nice, but we need to add some brightness to the middle. We've got our base colours in now, so we want to add a bit more oomph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my number eight brush and pick up any of these colours that I've got mixed, and I'm just going to throw them on. Ignore that. <laughs> You can see I've just splashed it onto the paper. Devil may care, but that's fine. We can sort that out in a minute. So just keep building up those colors. So because it's translucent, it'll let us carry on building it up. We can still see those yellow colors and the orange colors underneath, but we're just adding that detail now to build it, build it up. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Cleaning my brush, magic eraser. <laughs> we can get rid of any marks. Just a note, um, if you are using a magic eraser as I have, you can't then paint over that area because it does damage the paper a little bit. But using my damp brush, again, just blurring those colours. Taking that colour into that plant, into that leaf, lifting it up, outside edge, into that leaf, and then once again we just have to let it dry. If you want to lift out some of the colour at this point, you can just use that damp brush to lift out anything. Here for example, just press, and you can stop that paint from flooding. And just press. And then we just have to be a little bit patient and let it dry. Everything's completely dry, so I'm gonna mix a little bit more color. Same as before, only this time we need to make it less water. So it needs to be a lot of pigment. So I'm going in with a little bit of permanent red and also vermilion. So any orangey ready colors that you've got will be absolutely fine for this. And I'm mixing these two together. So we've got that nice orangey red tone. Also gonna put another blob of my yellowy tones. This is permanent yellow deep. 
and I'm going to be dipping in between these and of course the same colours as before we've got the purple so I'm using my number two brush it's the one with a nice fine point and I'm just going to be dipping in between these colours to add some depth of colour to this once again picking up my yellow anywhere that you want to add a little bit of a yellowy tone you can drop this in picking up that red you can see that the watercolour has dried a little bit sort of um, a little bit flat so we can add that punch of colour now just dropping that in. I'm going to take a little bit of permanent rose, something with a little bit of a pinky tone. I'm also going to put a little bit of um, kind of magenta tone to that, just to give it that little bit of a purple hue. If you look closely at this, you'll see there are a few kind of pinky tones, so I'm just dropping that in as well. You could add something like a quinacridone magenta if you've got that, just to pack a punch with that colour. You'll notice on the bottom part here, if you look at the reference photo, there's definitely that pinky hue, so let's put that in. Cleaning my brush, patting it dry, and then blending out that colour. Patting it dry and blending it out. You could use a bigger brush for this if you wanted to, of course. Blending it in, so we've got that lovely transition. You notice I've left a little bit of that yellow colour here, and we can just put it in the middle and over here. Use any pinky ready tones that you've got. This time I'm not taking it right to the edge, we're just mixing and matching those colours to give it that lovely autumnal feel. Okay, just pop that on. Clean your brush, pat it dry and then use that blend in motion. Clean your brush, pat it dry. Keep patting it and then you can just blend it out. Clean, pat, blend. Really easy to do, but you must make sure that you pat it dry because otherwise it's just going to drop the water onto that and it's just, it will bloom and push your pigment away. So that's a really important step. Pat, 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 clean, pat, and just move that around. So you've got these nice soft edges. Go into this color here. So this is the mixture of the purple and the brown. And once again, dropping it into that wet paint. Using that pat in motion once more, following that central line. And because that paint is still damp, it gives it that natural blur that we can see on the photograph of that leaf. You can drop in some more and just follow those pencil lines that you've got down. One or two of them in the dry areas will stick and that's what you wanted to do going back into that blur. You'll notice how it's blurring into that existing wash and sticking onto the areas that I didn't wet down when I applied that layer just then. And that's exactly what you want. Just patting that brush and taking it in. You can keep building up that colour if you want to. Like that. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. I'm going to mix a little bit more of that colour. We've got the purple colour. And just for reference, the colour I'm using is, is called Bright Clear Violet with a Van Dyke Brown, or you could use a sepia. Either will do, it's absolutely fine. This time I'm taking a different brush. Again, this is from my own set from Craftimo. This is my number four. And it might seem kind of reductive to, to use a larger size brush, but this is actually a finer point. Okay, so what you want to do with this, this, go, this is a great brush for your super, super fine detail. So I'm picking this up, loading my brush, and with the tip of this brush, I'm now going to outline areas of this leaf. Loading that brush, 
and just taking it to the outside edge and really sharpening that outside edge to give it that look of really packing a punch. This is for your finest of fine detail. And the really great thing about this little brush is that you don't have to keep reloading it because you can get quite a lot on that point. But because of this really super fine point, you can get into all the details, all the little curves on your paper, and just give it that lovely sharp outside edge. And against the white of that paper, it looks absolutely beautiful. Even on this bumpy surface where you can see these little nooks and crannies, it's really great for just wiggling that brush and just getting into the outside edge. Just to sharpen up any detail and make it look super cool. I'm going to leave the branch a little bit um, blurry as you can see here. If you want to add a little bit more detail, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. But just taking that, adding a little bit more of that purpley tone just to enhance one or two of the veins. But I want to keep them nice and soft and natural because they're still going to blur into that damp colour. And just use that slight patting motion to enhance one or two of them. Like that and just blur it out. Clean my brush, pat it dry and then blend it out like this. If you want to just soften any colours you can just use that patting motion. And my blender brush, if you want to just lift out a little bit of colour here and there just to make it look a little bit more natural you can do that. Just by using that kind of circular motion and patting that paper and then just blending it out lightly together. If you've got any hard edges you can use that brush to merge those. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to do a simple outline and the reference photograph so that you can pause the video, screenshot it and then you can print it out that way. Or if you'd like the actual digital version delivered to your inbox then join our Patreon. It's absolutely free for our outlines and we would love to see you there. Um, so do join that. I will link everything in the description box underneath this video. If you have enjoyed this video could I ask you to give it a like? Just hit that th thumbs up button. Um, it's a way of supporting me and of course you may want to consider subscribing to my channel where we do this every single Tuesday. You will get a full length tutorial that's not sped up we don't send you over to Patreon to pay for them. That's a separate thing entirely where you can pay for a much longer video that's a different subject. These are completely free and they're full length. Spread the word and help my channel grow. So once again, thank you very much for joining. Remember, this is going to be a sequence of videos where we're going to be painting a different uh, leaf. So if leaves are your thing, you may want to um, check us out every Tuesday. But for now, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. And let's just take a moment to appreciate the finished painting and I'll see you next week.